Hey, Michael. All right. Yep. So uh, now Daniel will be uh, Daniel uh, Sabanes Bove from from Roche will be talking about implementing mixed models uh, with repeated measures uh, in R and Shiny for regulatory purposes. Great. Thanks, Michael. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Great. Okay, so thanks. This is basically a case study um, how we implemented mixed models with repeated measures or short MMM in R. So this is joint work with many um, colleagues in product development data sciences at Roche. Um, and I hope I cover everybody here. So quick background. So in, in Roche, transformation to an R-based workflow, um, especially in our department, is, is ongoing. Um, we're kind of switching from regulatory and exploratory SaaS-based platforms more and more to, to our platforms, um, both regulatory and exploratory. And this is basically an illustrative um, slide here that shows um, how we see the SaaS usage diminishing in the next few years um, and the R usage increasing. Um, and here we want to provide with with the Nest platform, so-called Nest platform, a suite of R packages, which are really professionally um, engineered statistical software uh, packages um, to basically address the needs of biostatisticians and, and programmers in um, biometrics in, in Roche. So this is the only slide we have some formulas, so I hope it's not too scary, but basically just kind of quickly introduce the MMIM. So this is really a special case of a linear mixed model. Um, and uh, here we basically have um, fixed effects, beta, and we have um, random effects, these BIs that are patient specific. And we have some residuals that usually actually are the IID. Um, and we then typically in, in this MMM application, we are more interested in this marginal covariance matrix when we integrate out the random effects from the formula. So we end up with this VI matrix that is kind of combination of the, the um, residual covariance or, or variances and the random effects um, design matrix and um, covariance matrix of the random effects. So this VI is really the most interesting part for us. And in the end, we have this marginal model where we basically have the usual linear predictor as the means of our observations, Y, and we have this marginal covariance matrix. And then we just do restricted ML estimation of the parameters. So in application, uh, in, in pharma, typically this is done for the primary analysis of continuous endpoints in longitudinal clinical trials where the time variable is categorical that just has a small number of visits. Um, other covariates that we want to put in this model might be age, gender, baseline value of the outcomes, et cetera. And we use this model to account for the correlation between outcomes of the same patients at different visits. Now, typically we want this marginal covariance matrix, this VI that I mentioned before, to be unstructured, so basically be saturated in a saturated model so that we really have as many um, as much freedom um, as we can get to estimate this vi that will come up um, in, a, in a minute again so the challenge uh, was here so how do we now implement this mmm and r to to match the sas uh, results that we had before and this is really one example where the transformation is non-trivial so Basically, starting from SAS, where, where ProcMixed is kind of the gold standard um, traditional proprietary software, uh, it really has many options for MMM, so that's all good. But again, we want to move in the in the bigger picture. We want to move to R also for MMM analysis. So on the R side, there is the R package and LME. That's a classic mixed effects package um, that even has some transition guidance I found here from from Doug Bates. Uh, it has options for covariance matrix specification. Unfortunately, we couldn't get like exact set of weight, adjusted degrees of freedom, and p-values for our um, estimates. And that's unfortunately necessary uh, in the regulatory context. Now, the R packages LME4 and LMER test, those are more modern mixed effects packages. Uh, they are also actively being developed, which, which is a plus, and they give the exact set of weight adjustment. The only problem was that it seemed like the covariance matrix cannot be unstructured, and that this unstructured covariance matrix is really our preferred choice. 
So the first step was to really fit a model with unstructured covariance with LME4. And the solution to that was to first of all look in detail whether this assumption that, that we had was really true. Um, also in accepting that we need to use random effects, again thinking about this LMM representation um, before that I showed before to model the covariance. So we will not have things like AL1 and triplets, covariance matrices anymore. However, now for the unstructured covariance matrix, we can achieve that if we can if we nest the visit within the subject ID variable and we disable some check that LMER by default has in this way here, and then we can get it to work. And thanks at, at this point to, to Bryce Ozen, um, who had a pretty nice LMM vignette posted where, where I originally found this trick. This trick is not perfect. Um, we have one variance parameter actually too much um, here, but fortunately the covariance matrix as a whole is still identifiable. So there's no problem there. We just shouldn't look at the sigma estimate of the scale, scale parameter of the residual separately. The second step was um, addressing the problem that just using the default optimizer often failed convergence when fitting the linear mixed model. So here the solution was to just start with the default optimizer, see if it leads to convergence, but if not, then we can just try more optimizers. In this case, we currently have six additional optimizers. If multiple of them would work, then we can just take the result, result which gives the highest restricted likelihood. If none of them work, only then we would fail. So this really can improve um, the number of successes uh, here. And the nice thing is also we can run these um, these six additional optimizers in parallel uh, on multi-core pretty easily, at least on Unix. And we also figured out a way to use the load percentage statistics from the operating system to basically give us the number of free cores on our RStudio server instance, which in total has like 50 cores or something. So we can just let the user say, please, let's let's have parallel. And then the, the system or, or software figures out how many cores, um, maximum six can be used. And last step was to, to calculate the covariance estimate and model diagnostics because um, the default like information criteria in LME4, they do not match the SAS equivalents. And we need this marginal covariance matrix estimate for residual plots. Uh, so the solution here was starting from, from searching uh, as usual, mailing lists, et cetera. We got, a, we got a starting point for the covariance matrix calculations from FIT internals from LME4. Uh, just need to remember to take a patient that has really the maximum number of visits, so we get the, the full uh, VI marginal covariance matrix. And this helper function get ME from LME4 is, is very helpful to access the fit internals. Uh, implementing custom ASCBS, it was relatively simple. It just needs the effective number of variance parameters, but this comes from the covariance estimation as a side product. And we did lots of comparisons with SAS documentation and, and results to make sure um, including unit tests um, to make sure that our results really keep matching gold standard results up to numerical precision. Okay, so then how, do, how does the result look like? Um, I could just give you a few snapshots kind of here. So first of all, starting with the static production of tables and plots, which leverages our own R tables package um, for tables and ggplot2 for plots. So here's a small code usage example um, where you see that after data manipulation and loading, it's it's relatively short call to this this s underscore mmm uh, function, and it also the code base is relatively small, so almost two thousand lines of code um, for the for the functions, and then similar amount for the unit and regression tests. So it's still manageable, and we get different tables: least square means table, fixed effects tables, covariance tables, and model diagnostics. That's that's all pretty pretty nice. We we get different plots, <clears throat> of course, like least square plots, contrasts, and also some residual plots like like this one, for example, residuals versus fitted values. And overall, it took us two months to implement this, um, starting from the first discussions to the internal release in Roche as part of our internal nest package turn for statistical analysis. Few uh, snapshots here: interactive exploration via Shiny framework module. This is also leveraging our in-house Teal framework, and this really increases efficiency for study teams during study readout, which can be very busy times. Um, teams can specify the model, 
um, in detail um, in this shiny app that can do the filtering on the right hand side of the app which basically we get for free from the steel framework that we have we also have detailed fit controls so for example can enable here parallel computing we need to have delayed reactivity of the shiny um, outputs uh, since each fit takes at least five seconds so it would make sense to do that every time and then we also have a nice show r code button which the user can press and then it allows them to basically copy paste the static r code for the pipeline basically that they maybe want to run so quick outlook at the end um, the next steps for leveraging the full value of our mm implementation starts with the validation so we have a validation cycle which is pretty regular and this, this implementation will be part of that and then installed in our regulatory R platform and this will open the door to submissions including the MMM results from R. We want to further improve the convergence behavior so we are also discussing with for example Ben Volker from LME4 team like what are the best practices for example for handling row ordering, convergence warnings etc and this will increase robustness and user experience further. And finally, we're also looking at methods extensions. So currently, we basically have unstructured and compound symmetry as the kind of ends of this of the scale, very very complex and very simple in terms of number of parameters. But there can also be something in between, uh, which would be good as a fallback solution in case that the unstructured covariance matrix doesn't converge. Um, and in addition, some random slope analysis module, which is basically treating time as continuous, um, was, was requested by study teams and that could just leverage backbone pieces that we already have in place. So this will take more time, but cover more use cases. Yeah, and that was already it. Please reach out to us if you're interested, maybe even in cross-company collaborations. We are really looking forward to that and or if you have any questions on MMIM or NEST in general. Thank you. Great, thanks Daniel. Uh, I'll uh, gather up uh, any questions and, and forward them to you uh, via Slack.